Hey everyone, welcome back to Apollo Art Analysis. In today's episode, we're going to be studying a piece by the AI generative artist known as Marco. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing the dream core aesthetic. We're also going to look at the marriage between nostalgia and horror. So let's just jump right into it. So at first sight, you're going to wonder what the hell is happening here. There's so much going on in this composition. We see what appears to be some type of living room foyer or front of some kind or another, although it's hard to see exactly where we are. This could be in a living room looking upstairs. This could be near the front door. It's hard to say, but regardless, we're struck by the sheer amount of toys, objects, memorabilia present within this composition. This no doubt floods the composition. It gives you a sense of wonder and even a sense of the unsettled as well, right? This is surreal in so many different ways. You're not going to be seeing this in your regular day-to-day -day life. I think there's no doubt about that. Of course, we appear to be looking upstairs here, you know, standing, like I said, near the front door in a living room of some kind or another. It's hard to say for sure, but there is no doubt this work is incredibly cluttered. This creates what we would call visual energy, right? The sheer amount of forms present within this composition alone that gives an incredible amount of energy, a sense of rhythm, but it is quite wild. It is chaotic. And like I said, we don't know what exactly is happening here. We see this across multiple different things from, you know, the placement, like I said, of form, but also that sense of color, right? So so many different colors are present within this composition, so that is going to overwhelm you. It's going to give you a lot of visual energy, and that's also quite important to talk about. I also want to discuss, you know, like I said, the sheer amount of colors here. We have everything from, you know, yellow to blue to red, green. There's so much happening within this work, so this is all going to clash. It's going to feel garish. It's going to feel quite unsettling, even terrifying in that aspect as well. So this work is honestly created to make you feel unsettled, and I think it does a brilliant job about that. And of course, Next to this sense of color is this kind of grainy composition, right? There is this sense that we are in a dream. It is, you know, ill-defined. It is a little low resolution. It is grainy. It is foggy, if you will, as well. So I think that all reinforces that feeling alongside this extremely chaotic color, chaotic form. And of course, it feels like an absolute nightmare here. But of course, with this in mind, I wanted to ask you guys, how do you all feel when you view this composition? Is this work unsettling to you or do you feel a different emotion? Do you somehow feel nostalgic when you look at this. I want to know what exactly y'all are feeling when you're looking at this work. And so I briefly mentioned it, but the setting appears to be some type of home at the very least, right? We could be near the front door looking upstairs, or we could be in a living room. It's hard to say for sure, but regardless, this points to the suburbs, right? The kind of American suburbs, if you will. These are typically used as symbols of sterility or symbols of individualism, right? People typically live in single family homes, quite, you know, separated from one another. You know, you're going to see your neighbor and you go out, you see people in your community when you go out to the supermarket or something like that. But in your regular day-to-day -day life, it's pretty easy to kind of, you know, feel isolated in the suburbs. And also, I say sterility because in the suburbs, a lot of people and children are quite protected. They're sheltered. You know, they are sterile. Every single environment is meant to be, you know, as least dangerous as possible, you know, even to where something that is scary is kind of smothered or hidden from the child as well. And so this composition, I think even the drink or aesthetic more broadly, I think it deals with that sense of the sudden shocks of growing up, but also that sense of the sterile suburbs or the, you know, kind of loneliness that we may feel as well. There's so many different things that the dream core aesthetic often combines. But within this work, like I said, you see so many different toys. Even each one is kind of ill-defined. That's what the AI generative medium does quite so well. But we see a lot of consumer goods, you know, stuffed animals. We see what appears to be a slide or a toy, inflatables. We see, you know, various picture frames. We see even a computer in there. We see lamps. We see so much going on within this composition. So this could point to consumer culture. A lot of people feel like they're, you know, crushed under the weight of the amount of items which they have. Of course, outsourcing things like to China has created very cheap and abundant goods. There is no doubt about that. But there comes a point where people feel like they need to get rid of a lot of things. They have too much. And I think we certainly feel that within this composition. The title of this work is What Happened. That's exactly what I opened this video off with. You know, it's hard to say what the hell happened here. It feels like we're in a nightmare in so many different ways, right? There is a sense of confusion. We wonder where these items came from. We wonder if they belong to us. We wonder even where exactly we are. So all of this confusion works so well to create the spirit, the mood, and the visual experience and even greater experience of this composition. I think there's no doubt about that. But, you know, like I said, some people can feel like they're even borderline hoarding items. And so to get rid of that is a very liberating feeling. But you could often feel 
Of course, before you get rid of them, you could feel like you're crushed under the weight of so many different items which you own. I think this composition captures that feeling pretty well. But at the same time, these items which you own, they are going to be connected to memories in some kind or another. So you could see this work as a memory vault as well. You know, so many different memories in the house which you inhabit, all the items which you own, they all capture something in some way or another. They can be hard to let go. I think there's no doubt about that. But, you know, these items, they just flood the composition. They create this very unsettling vision experience and they are you know pushing into the boundary of horror i think there's no doubt about that so to talk about the dream aesthetic we have to understand childhood nostalgia and then even at times a sense of the unsettling i have two additional works here one from the original artist marco and another from empty spaces.png as well as dextinasia i'm going to bring in two additional works here to talk about the dream aesthetic a little bit more all right, like I said, I have two additional works here, one from Marco and another one from two artists. That's going to be EmptySpaces.png collaborating with Dextinasia. And the reason I brought these in, you know, I talked a little bit about the Dream Quest aesthetic, that sense of childhood nostalgia. For example, we have the stuffed animals there. Of course, no doubt a symbol of nostalgia, much like the toys in this original composition. But the reason I brought in both these works is I want to talk about the spectrum of horror that the Dream Quest aesthetic can have. Of course, this work is quite terrifying. This work is pretty unsafe settling but you know both these are going to be even arguably more terrifying than the work on the left when i look at the work on the left it is much more nostalgia it is not as terrifying course it is a very gray dim and depressing setting but that is nothing compared to these two terrifying works on the right so the dream cross set can be you know a little unsettling or it could be extremely unsettling but i think all three of these works would be characterized under the dream core aesthetic people often combine that with liminal spaces as well i think we certainly see that so i just want to bring in two additional works to talk a little bit more about the dream core aesthetic i think that's just so important here all right, so of course the dream core aesthetic that mix of childhood nostalgia also mixing with the nightmare. Of course, it is also a dream as well. And there's also this feeling that people are also slow to grow up as well. You know, they kind of hold on to childhood as long as they can. They don't want to become an adult. And I think the dream core aesthetic captures so many different elements of that feeling as well as everything we mentioned before. But like I said, this work feels like a nightmare. It is absolutely terrifying. It is surreal as well. You're not going to be seeing something like this in real life because some of these toys, they just kind of are mangled and merged into one another. So that creates that surreal spirit to the work at hand, even more terrifying. I think there's no doubt about that, but really hope you'll enjoy it today. The work before us, like I briefly mentioned, is an AI generative work. So it's created in the AI art program known as Midjourney. Midjourney is incredibly popular. Everyone from amateurs to professionals use Midjourney to create their work. So if you don't get involved in the world of AI generative art, Midjourney is an incredible place to start. But yeah, we talked about so many different things today from the dream core aesthetic, a sense of nostalgia the sense of horror of course many different elements of the dream core aesthetic from nostalgia to horror we talked about consumer culture we talked about the sheer amount of visual energy in this composition from color to form so much is happening within this work but i really hope y'all enjoyed if y'all enjoyed today go check out the original artist marco doing some amazing stuff in the ai genetic medium he also creates a lot of different edits you know taking works from other artists compiling them into videos that has certainly helped him create a large following as well so like i said i really hope y'all enjoyed enjoyed if y'all did go check out the original artist marco my name is apollo this was apollo art analysis and i'll see y'all on the next episode we hope you enjoyed today's episode if you'd like to support our work directly please check out our apollo community tokens apollo art exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day thanks for listening